Welcome back to Shizen Style, this is Josh. Today we're talking about yakisugi, or shosugiban, which is Japanese charred cedar. When I was living in Japan, I noticed that even though it was hot out, you would see black houses, like jet black houses, out in the countryside, in rice fields, and also along city streets, um, older neighborhoods, and it's sort of a bolder color that you don't see so often uh, in North America. So it was really intriguing and I, I started looking into it and I realized that you know there was uh, a lot of history to this technique and it's a practical siding that was created um, 1700s I believe um, and they would burn the outside of the of the wood. And by doing that, it did a few things. It killed off all of the, the bugs and termites that would normally infest the wood. And it also sort of weatherproofed it or waterproofed it. Uh, so it made for a great natural siding that um, now you're starting to see it take trend or you know become popular uh, outside of Japan. And it sort of died off for a while in Japan and is also coming back in Japan. So traditionally, you know, there's a few different ways to make it. I'm gonna talk about a few different styles or how you can DIY the yakisugi at home. There are a few practical benefits to using this type of siding as well. Uh, the first one would be it's uh, fireproof. Uh, because you char it already, uh, it, it removes all of the moisture from the wood, so it creates uh, a natural uh, fireproofing element to the wood. Uh, the second benefit would be that it waterproofs it, so it creates this seal around uh, the outside that also uh, then keeps all the, the other water and moisture out. And the third benefit is that it uh, prevents uh, the slugs and uh, termites and a lot of the other insects uh, from coming in. So after burning it, uh, you're, you're basically burning off the chemicals and the carbohydrates in the wood, which is basically food for the insects. So by killing that off, you're also preventing them from uh, penetrating the wood later on. So traditionally it was used on farmhouses and some of the other siding, uh, but nowadays you can see it coming back in the form of interior items as well. Uh, benches, tables, walls, uh, both interior and exterior. Uh, if it's interior, then you're gonna need to seal it more uh, because it does form almost like a, a charcoal. If you take it all the way to that alligator level of charring, at one of our restaurants, uh, we used it as a backdrop around the register area and also to display some merchandise and things. And it's jet black, but it, each piece of wood does sort of have its own texture and the bubbles on it. Uh, with the way the light hits it, it's, it's all about the texture with the yakisugi. So it's a really interesting concept if to put on a wall especially if you can put it in a place that's possibly out of reach from everyday uh, hands touching and banging into it. So that's why we didn't, we didn't have it along a, a wall that people would bump into and that type of thing because it, it is somewhat fragile if you do char it all the way to get the bubble. Um, but there's a lot of different degrees and levels that you can take it to. So. Next, we're gonna talk about um, uh, taking your yakisugi as a DIY project. So there are a few places in North America that you can get your hands on uh, some lumber, uh, lumber companies that are doing yakisugi uh, professionally. Um, so if you're looking to do your whole house, that might be something that you wanna reach out to. But if you're just looking to play around with it inside, um, or a, a small wall or an old piece of furniture, uh, an old table, coffee table type of thing. Um, it's definitely, it's, it's fun to play around with and it's fun to create your own uh, 
modern rustic project. There's two main methods of creating a yakisugi. Uh, the traditional one is put into a triangle and held upright and it's sort of tied all the way around. So you, you, you form a, almost like a, a cylinder and you let the, the smoke and the fire burn up and out. It maximizes the heat, it keeps it all together so everything does burn uh, efficiently. But what I found is it, it is hard to control the level or the degree of charring that you're looking for. Um, it, can, it can burn unevenly. I've tried to do it the traditional way. It's, it's a little difficult. Um, so I do recommend the more modern way of using uh, basically a torch and you can get some it's basically the same gas that you use for your barbecue grill uh, you can they're replaceable uh, at uh, some of the local box stores or uh, maybe your convenience store or a gas station might have uh, the returnable tanks and, and then I purchased a, a torch for it. Um, some of the high-powered torches uh, you can get online, they're, they're really not that expensive. And you have much more control over the degree of heat. Uh, and it's all about the distancing between uh, the wood and the, and the torch. So the first thing to take into consideration is the place. So where are you going to do this? It should be outside, a ventilated area, um, ideally on like a concrete or a cement. Uh, grass is okay um, if you're keeping it you know, above the ground, off the ground. Having it up on some cinder blocks has always worked well for me. So the next thing to think about is the type of wood you're gonna use. So technically, yakisugi, shosugiban refers to uh, Japanese cedar or Hinoki cypress uh, which grows natively in Japan and that's been found to be uh, really the the best material for it although it's difficult to get here uh, in North America so uh, maybe a, a red cedar um, hemlock eastern pine uh, something like that uh, maybe even an oak if you wanted to try that um, you can try it with a variety of wood and see which effect y you like best. Uh, it's going to come out differently for each type of wood. Some of them still stay durable. Other ones are too soft and they bubble up and they, they tend to warp uh, very easily. So if, it, if the wood is too soft, uh, that can pose some problems. The next thing to think about is what style of yakisugi you would like. You can take it to all the way down to what they call the alligator level, and that's, that's gonna be the longest, the darkest. It provides the bubble, um, the jet black bubbles on there. It's really beautiful. Uh, but there's a lot of degrees up to that as well. Uh, you can burn it and then uh, they ca sometimes call it the tiger look. Uh, where you might rub it off or you only burn it slightly so you're burning in between the grain so it really highlights the grain versus the natural wood color. Um, that can look really nice. For me it tends to look a little too busy at times but it depends on how much you use and how you do it. So there's all those different degrees and levels that you can play with. You can get a nice solid dark brown or a solid black that maybe you brush off and you don't need it almost looks like a stain um, but this is a natural way of treating the wood that uh, should last a very long time after you're done burning the wood um, you should have water very close on hand and i have both a hose ready and a water jug to uh, sprinkle water over the top and it will smoke and everything, but you want to make sure that all of the, the fire is out and it does help solidify it very quickly. The wood is still going to be hot, but so you got to give it time to cool down. But making sure you have that water over top is uh, very important after, after you've burned the top layer. 
After that's cooled down, I always make sure I have a soft bristle brush um, or a broom to get all of the loose charcoal pieces off of there. Um, even if you're gonna keep the, the softer bubbles from the alligator look on there, you should give it a, a good brush off. You can also go farther, and this is get a metal bristle brush, and you can take almost all of the top layer off and just keep going until you, you find that degree of grain and uh, dark charcoal that speaks to you. The last step in the process is sealing it. Um, some people choose not to seal it. Uh, that's, that's totally up to you. I found that if you're gonna have it inside, uh, I would seal it. Um, either way, I usually tend to seal it with a polyurethane. And with the polyurethane, you can also choose a variety of um, sheens. So I, you can go with a matte finish. Uh, I think uh, for the restaurant, we used a satin finish, uh, which gives a, a little bit of shine, but not a hardcore glossy look. So the yakisugi can last a very long time. Uh, I've seen rural farmhouses in Japan that are over 100 years old and are still a beautiful, deep, rich black color. Um, so durability, longevity are, are definitely uh, key aspects to this type of um, siding, if that's what you're going for. I hope this modern rustic DIY project uh, helps a little bit with your exploration of yakisugi and or shosugiban. For more videos, watch Shizen Style. And we'll be having, I also have an article with a bit more detail, uh, the complete guide to yakisugi on my website. You can see the link below. And if interested, please subscribe to check out more videos um, for your modern rustic home and garden.